Hey everybody, a brand new topic, higher order derivatives. Suppose that y equals f of x, then f prime of x is the same thing as y prime of x, and that's the same thing as dy dx. These are all just different notations for the derivative or what we're going to call here parenthetically the first derivative of f of x. And if there's a first derivative of f of x, I guess there must be a second derivative of f of x, right? And here it is. We call this the second derivative of x, alias f double prime of x, y double prime of x, d squared y dx squared and these symbols represent the second derivative of f of x and if you think about it all I've told you so far is the notation for the second derivative. I haven't told you what it is, so maybe it's about time I should. To get the second derivative, we compute the derivative of the first derivative, f prime of x. So the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. Now the reason we didn't use the expression first derivative before is because we didn't know anything about a second derivative. There was no chance for ambiguity. But we're going to be working with second derivatives and maybe third derivatives, f triple prime of x, y triple prime, d cubed y dx cubed, and these are the notations for the third derivative of f of x. And how do we get the third derivative? If you're thinking that we compute the, the derivative of the second derivative, you're right. The third derivative is the derivative of the second derivative. And is there a fourth derivative? Uh, there is. But right about this time, the prime notation becomes very cumbersome. So here's where we change over slightly to a different style of notation. Uh, this number in parentheses represents the order of the derivative. So this represents the fourth derivative. And it makes sense. If we had the tenth derivative, we wouldn't want to have to count the little prime marks. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's the ten. Well, wait a minute. Did I miscount? Let me count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. This notation gets unwieldy after a while. So after the third derivative, we represent the higher order derivatives this way. And this is the fourth derivative.
And to get the fourth derivative, we compute the derivative of the third derivative. And do we have orders of derivatives higher than that? We sure do. So we'll call this the nth derivative. And to get the nth derivative, we compute the derivative of its predecessor, the n plus first, the n minus first derivative. In this course, we will have a need for the second derivative. For those of us who are going on to Cal 2, uh, toward the end of Cal 2, we'll need the third derivative, the fourth derivative, the fifth derivative, the sixth derivative, and so forth. And believe it or not, there's really a legitimate need to know these in Cal 2. Let's do a few examples. Okay, we have a function f of x, and we're going to compute the first derivative. And by and large, to get to the higher order derivatives, we have to compute the lower order derivatives first. It's kind of like a uh, I don't know, I like the cherry flavored jelly beans and maybe we have a jar of jelly beans and I'm not gonna eat them all, I'm just gonna eat the cherry flavored ones. And I look in this jar and there's only one and son of a gun, it's right on the bottom. Well, whether I like it or not, uh, I'm going to have to work my way through all of the jelly beans on top to make it to that cherry flavored jelly bean on the bottom. And higher order derivatives are pretty much like that. Uh, I'm going to have to work through the first, second, third, and fourth derivatives to get to the fifth derivative. Because to compute the fifth derivative, I need to know what the fourth derivative is. But to get the fourth derivative, I need to know what the third derivative is, and so forth. So... I'll start with the first derivative, f prime of x, and that's 18x to the fifth plus 16x cubed minus 18x squared minus 14x plus 2. And did I do that right? I think so. Now, second derivative, 5 times 18 is 90x to the fourth plus 48x squared minus 36x minus 14. And third derivative, 360x to the third plus 96x minus 36. Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, here I change my style of notation. This means fourth derivative. And holy moly, 360 times 
3, I'm guessing that's 1080, I hope, x squared plus 96, and f to the fifth, the fifth derivative of f of x, uh, wow, 2160 x. So that's how we do higher order derivatives. But let's look at a related example. Eh, we got one example going, we might as well just keep it going. Given the function f of x of the previous example, compute the 10th derivative. Well, to do this, we need the 9th derivative. And to get the 9th derivative, we need the 8th derivative. And to get the 8th derivative, we need the 7th derivative. And to get the 7th derivative, we need the 6th derivative. And to get the 6th derivative, we need the 5th derivative. Ooh, but we have that, don't we? We have the 5th derivative, so we can start with the 6th derivative here. And this is just a constant times x. So the 6th derivative is 2160. And the seventh derivative, huh, what's the derivative of a constant? Uh, it's zero, isn't it? And what do you think we get when we compute the derivative of zero? <laughs> we get zero. So all of the succeeding derivatives are going to be zero. Now, there are a couple of points here. One, if we compute the derivative of a polynomial enough times, we're going to get zero. And all the derivatives after that are going to be zero. Now, when is it that we hit zero? The seventh derivative was zero here, wasn't it? And we started out with f of x being a sixth degree polynomial. We had a sixth degree polynomial. And the seventh derivative was the first derivative that was zero. I think we can conclude something from that. K was the first, K was 7, and the degree of our polynomial was 6. So K was the first derivative after the sixth derivative. K was the the smallest integer greater than 6. So if we have a polynomial of degree n, then all of the derivatives are going to be 0 if the order of the derivative is a whole number greater than n. So if we have a polynomial of degree 6, then for all whole numbers greater than 6, the order of the derivative is 0. 
So if we have a polynomial of degree 10, what's the first whole number greater than 10? 11, right? So for the 11th derivative, 12th derivative, and so on, the derivatives are going to be 0. Now, there's something else we should look at. Uh, usually, higher order derivatives are not predictable, but for a few rare functions, they are. So let's see these rare functions. The, the higher order derivatives of sines and cosines are worth seeing. Suppose f of x equals sine of x. What's the derivative? Cosine, right? To get the second derivative, we just compute the derivative of the first derivative. The derivative of cosine of x, negative sine x. To get the third derivative, we just compute the derivative of the second derivative. The derivative of negative sine x, negative cosine x. To get the fourth derivative, we compute the derivative of the third derivative. The derivative of negative cosine of x is positive sine of x. And then the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. And the derivative of negative sine of x is negative cosine of x. And the deriv derivative of negative cosine of x is positive sine of x. And derivative of positive sine of x is cosine of x. And you know what? This pattern keeps on going. Uh, we'd say that this is one cycle of the derivatives. And the cycle is sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. And then the cycle starts all over again. So here's another cycle. Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. And then here's another cycle. Sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. The pattern repeats every four derivatives. So let's see. What derivatives equal sine of x? Oh, and by the way, Watch me go backwards here. Fourth derivative, third derivative, second derivative, first derivative. What might we call f of x? Third derivative, second derivative, first derivative. If you guessed the zeroth derivative, you're absolutely right. There is such an expression. The zeroth, the zeroth derivative, the zeroth derivative is f of x itself. But let's see, zeroth derivative is sine of x, fourth derivative is sine of x, eighth derivative is sine of x. How does this pattern continue? Zeroth derivative, fourth derivative, eighth derivative, twelfth derivative, sixteenth derivative, twentieth derivative. If the order of the derivative is divisible by four, it's going to be sine of x. So that sort of gives us an easy way to compute higher order derivatives of sine uh, and cosine. Uh, the derivatives of cosine follow a pattern as well. Cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, sine, cosine. So the cosine's derivatives follow a similar pattern. Sines and cosines are kind of unique in this respect that their derivatives follow a cyclic pattern. 
Now, this is all I wanted to say about higher order derivatives at this time. Uh, we'll have half a dozen homework problems just to give us some practice computing second derivatives, third derivatives, and so forth. And the next lecture will be applying this second derivative to something. We don't just have the second derivative because, wow, isn't this interesting? Uh, we have the second derivative because there's actually an application for it.